Hey guys, and welcome to this week's vlog. It's been a busy week for me, but today's vlog is all about how to find your path to success, and more importantly, how to stay on it. Roll the intro. Gather up your weary souls, show them you ain't dead. Tell them all you ain't coming home. Woo, Hey guys, and welcome to this week's vlog. I know it's Saturday, I'm a little late in getting the vlog up this week. Uh, I normally like to tr uh, try to put them up on Thursdays, but it's been kind of a crazy week around here. I spent a couple of days in LA this week. Uh, love the weather out there, and it's always perfect. And I love being in, in Los Angeles, but it's always great to come home too. Um, but I'm just now getting to uh, this week's vlog and I'm looking forward to it. I want to remind you before we get started, as always, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, I encourage you to do so. Lots of great content already up on the channel, but some really big plans coming for uh, the rest of 2018. So all you have to do is go over there and click on the subscribe button and make sure you hit the little bell next to it so that you're notified every time I upload new content. Today's vlog, how to find your path to success, and more importantly, how to stay on it. Whether you're talking about the music business or any other business that you really could get involved in, it really doesn't matter. Everybody wants to be successful. I can't tell you the number of artists that I work with, and songwriters and creative people. Um, I have yet to run across anybody that does not want to be successful, um, but about one or two out of 10 people that I talk to actually know how to be successful. Um, and I think that's why you see so many people fail. You see so many people struggle and ultimately fail. Now, we've talked before uh, in these blogs about the important part that failure actually plays in success. And you're going to fail multiple times. But what I'm talking about, and I think you know what I'm talking about, you see these people that perpetually fail um, in just about everything they try. And there's a reason for that. They don't know how to find their path to success. Uh, and if they ever do find it, they don't know how to stay on that path to success. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Because I want to see all of you succeed. Nothing in life is better than succeeding at something that you have a passion for or something that you believe in. So today we're gonna to talk about how to find that path to success. The first thing I wanna talk about is actually making a plan. Um, I, I find it so odd and, and hard to believe sometimes that when somebody tells me something they're involved in or, or talks to me about something they wanna be successful in or at, and I ask specific questions, they can't answer those questions. Um, and that always, strikes me as as odd. Um, I'm one of these kind of people that if I'm getting involved in something, I like to know everything there is to know about it. Even, even if I have just a small, slight understanding of it going in, I do the research, I get online, I, I look for books, uh, I, I do everything that I can do to try to understand what I'm getting involved with. Especially when you're talking about the music business. Um, you would be surprised how many independent artists, new artists, songwriters, musicians, they don't understand the business. What that comes from is by nature, most people that enter the music business or the entertainment business are creative people. And we think out of a certain side of our brain and we think and we count on the creative side of the business constantly. And that's because that's where we draw our passion from. That's what excites us is the passion of creation and creating something from nothing. Um, but oftentimes we forget that there is a business side to this. And if you want the creative side to be successful, the business side has to be successful as well. So I encourage you all in, in finding your path to success, know what you're getting into, know the business. If you're talking about the entertainment business and the music business, do you know what publishing is? Do you know what an administration company is? Do you know what a publishing company does? Do you know what record labels do? Do you know what their responsibilities are? Do you know what a 360 deal is? Do you know the definitions of all these things before you just jump in head first? Let me ask you a question. 
skydiving. Would you ever just show up to uh, uh, an airplane a service that provides skydiving and hop on the plane, throw on the parachute, and then take off and go jump out of the plane? Absolutely not. There's a reason why when you go skydiving, it's mandatory that you take this several hour course before they ever let you on the airplane. That's because they want to teach you and you need a foundation and an understanding about what it is you're getting ready to do and you know exactly how to do what it is that you're getting ready to do. So many people that I find and that I run into, that I talk to, they are so unprepared for what they are getting themselves into that it's not it's not even funny. Um, then they start investing their time. They start investing their money. They start investing their passion. And, and when they don't have that plan to follow and they don't have that understanding of what it is they're getting into, then all of a sudden they start failing and they don't understand why they're failing. But that's really the cause of it is because they don't understand the business. They've not prepared themselves uh, to have knowledge or an education uh, in what it is that you're getting ready to do. I'm going to tell you something that I tell new artists all the time. And as a person that is trying to find your path to success and that wants to be successful, you ultimately have one responsibility. And I, I want you to think of it this way. I want you to think of your path to success as a train track. And your responsibility, and in that you've got to think success is a train. Think of success as a train and your path to success as the train track. Your responsibility every day is to get up and put yourself in the middle of the track. None of us know the train schedule. We don't know when it's coming by. We have no idea which direction it's coming from. We don't know any of that. But we know that our path is the track and that success is the train. Your job as a creative person or as a person that wants to be successful at anything that you do in life, you have one responsibility. Get up every single day and walk, run, sprint, whatever you have to do to get yourself smack dab in the middle of those tracks. And walk or run in one direction or the other. Your main responsibility is to make sure that you are standing in the middle of the tracks when the train comes by. That's it. That's your main responsibility. Finding that path is doing all the hard work leading up to that. I find so many people, one reason they don't ever find their path to success and, and the reason they don't ever get hit by that train is because they get up every day and they go and they walk and they stand about 10 feet off of the tracks. And they look around and they spend a majority of their time trying to find somebody else that's gonna pick them up and carry them and place them on the track. That's relying and waiting on somebody else to make it happen for you. I've talked about this in several other vlogs. If it is to be, it is up to me. Nobody's going to do this for you. Nobody's going to pick you up and place you in the middle of those tracks so that that train can hit you when it comes by. That success train comes by and you've got to be in the middle of those tracks. So many people think somebody else is going to do it for me. In the music business, I see it all the time. If I just had a manager, if I had a booking agent, if I had a social media marketing specialist, if I had a record label, if I had this or if I had that, if I had a tour bus, it... They wait on all of those other things to come to them to place them in the path of success. That you cannot do. That means you will very rarely ever find that path because this is a very selfish business. Um, most of the time when you're talking about managers and booking agents and all of those things that go along with being a successful mainstream artist, they already want to be involved with you when you're already on that train. The train has to have already hit you for them to have any interest whatsoever. So stop relying on other people to take you and place you in the path of success. Get up every day with one thing in mind, and that is going and placing yourself on the track, walking or running in one direction or the other, but never leaving the track, waiting on that train to come. The second thing I want to talk to you about today in finding your path to success is one of the very 
actually probably one of the most important elements of this that I find most people don't spend enough time on. And I know that I have made this mistake in my career uh, and it, it, it has hurt me in my career, quite honestly. Um, and that is upfront, before you even start identifying what you call success and, and what those parameters are and, and what has to happen for you to consider yourself a success. The minute you identify whatever it is that you're gonna be going into, whatever business that it is, whether it's the music business or the printing business or the window selling business or the siding business, it doesn't matter. The first thing you need to do is identify your weaknesses. What is it that you could be better at that you're just not quite there? For example, for me, it was being social. Um, I am not a social person at all. Um, the entertainment business and the music business is, is predicated and built on social relationships and so social atmospheres and being around people and going out and drinking. Alcohol plays a huge part in our business. I don't drink, so I was never going to go out and buy people drinks and sit at the bar and go to all these events and get drunk and make promises to people that I wouldn't remember tomorrow. Um, but even outside of that, just the social aspect of it. Um, I tend to gravitate and, and invest myself in people that I like a lot. Um, whether they can do something for my career or not, it's, it's a, like a personal relationship thing for me. And I keep a very small circle, and I always have. Um, that has hurt me in, in my career. I can tell you, I could have accomplished a hell of a lot more had I been like some of these other people that I knew and I, that I had identified up front that my weakness was not being very social and not involving myself enough in social atmospheres and trying to broaden my circle and get in with all these other in crowds. Um, it just was something that I was never good at and that was a weakness. Um, you need to identify what that weakness is for yourself. And unlike a lot of people, I'm not gonna tell you to overcome that weakness. Um, I feel that who I am and, and being as socially awkward as I am and not liking a lot of people like that, I'm not, not being that way, um, I'm not gonna tell you to overcome that because it's, it's who we are. Um, and, and I don't ever like to tell people that you need to change. What I will tell you is that you need to find a way to cope with that and be able to overcome it to a certain extent to where it helps you in your career instead of hurting you uh, in your career. Don't try to change who you are and be somebody you aren't. Um, we have a lot of that in our business. Uh, I, I always find it funny talking to friends of mine that are in the business and, and every time we are out at somewhere, we, we're at an event and we're talking to people, we always laugh later about the people that we met. We didn't really meet them. We met the person that they wanted us to see. Um, and that's all built on self-esteem and it's built on pride. We go out and, and a lot of times these people we want people to see, they enter the room about 10 minutes before we actually do. That has always made me uncomfortable, um, is trying to project something else. And I used to do that, but here the last several years, I've just become more of who I am. And, and if you don't like that, that's fine. And that's understand. we don't have to have a relationship, but I can spend my time and invest my passion and, and my friendship with people that I see that come back from and I see them be the same way to me. Um, it oftentimes means that your circle is a lot smaller than you would like it to be. But I've also tried to learn from my own mistakes and, and find ways that I cannot overcome my weakness, but that I can try to use it as an advantage to where it doesn't help me, it actually hurts me. So in that, Think about that thing, and if you have to, write this down. I encourage people to write everything down, whether it's you're putting it in the notes on your iPhone or you're, you're making a Google Doc or whatever it is, or even just literally handwriting it on a piece of paper. You need to be writing down your goals, achievable goals, not lofty goals, not gonna open for Carrie Underwood on tour next year, because that's not gonna happen. Write down realistic, achievable goals so that you give yourself a roadmap to that path to success 
celebrate the small victories as you go and as you accomplish those goals one by one. But just as important, flip the page. Write down the things that you're not good at. Write down the things that make you uncomfortable. Write down the things that you feel are your weaknesses. Find ways to turn those weaknesses into a strength. Or at least go, I, okay, I identify that I don't like being up in front of people. Well, if you wanna be an artist, that's kind of a difficult thing to overcome, but you've got to find a certain way to overcome that. One of the example of this, there are several very popular country singers um, that have sold millions of records and played to millions of fans over the last 20 years. One in particular did not feel comfortable uh, in front of people. So he developed this thing where he closes his eyes when he sings. And that's his way of knowing that that's a weakness of his and that he is uncomfortable on stage looking at people and that makes him very uncomfortable. So he started closing his eyes when he sang and that helped him. It didn't mean that he didn't go up in front of people and that he let that weakness keep him from his destiny. He found a way to work through it and to turn it into an advantage. And that's what I'm talking about. Write these things down. Write down your goals and write down your weaknesses so that you can identify them and you can literally go through them and think to yourself, okay, I'm not good at this, so what do I need to do to get better at it? Or I don't think changing this would mean changing me as a person and I'm, I can't do that, so what can I do to make it manageable? What can I do to at least turn that negative into some sort of a positive or help me find a way through it. And that's the main thing I wanna to talk to you about. Not So many people focus their time on finding their path to success on focusing all their time on the things that they're good at. When oftentimes it's the one, two, or three things that they're not good at that actually kept them from their path to success. In the music business, I'll tell you right now, I spent years in the radio business as a program director running country radio stations all over the country. And it's funny, artists used to come to the radio station trying to get us to play their music all the time. And I would always sit afterwards and we would talk about the acts that came in. And we could tell you, this act is gonna be a star. This act is not going anywhere. And a lot of that was based on their attitude in the room. A lot of them had weaknesses where they just were not very good with people. They, they, they didn't know how to communicate well. Um, if you're an artist and you're getting into the music business and that's a weakness for you, you've got to find a way to, to put that, that game face on even though it makes you extremely uncomfortable because those weaknesses can hold you back. In those situations, I remember going, okay, we're probably not going to play this single because so much about music is fans being able to want to relate to the artists and and feel like they're a part of the family and that they're friends and that there's a connection between them and if in that position i found that i didn't think that my fans would ever would ever or the country music fans that listen to the radio station would ever connect with this artist i didn't feel like it was worth investing in that artist to give them airtime on the radio station um so there's you can point to all sorts of little situations like that so think about that Number one, in recap, know where the train tracks are. Write down a plan to get to them. Once you do that, it's your responsibility every single day to get up, walk, run, sprint, whatever you gotta do to place yourself in the middle of the tracks and just stay there and wait for that train to come by. None of us know when it's coming, but I can tell you this, if you're not in the middle of the tracks, you're not ever gonna see the train, that's for sure. Number two, Identify your weaknesses. Know what they are. Know what your strengths are. Yes, that's extremely important. But I'll tell you more importantly is to know your weaknesses. Know where you fall short and then create a plan to overcome those as well. And I promise you, you do those two things and you will have built a solid plan to find your path to success. Now here's something easy I wanna talk about. When you find that path, how do you stay on that path? 
because that's that's an important thing. There's nothing worse. There's nothing better in the world, like we said, than succeeding at something you're passionate about. There's also nothing worse in the world than achieving it and then watching it go away. Oftentimes I see that people that do find success, they they try to find the next level and the next level and keep, and go beyond. When the real key to staying on your path to success is rinse and repeat. If you'll look around at some of the most successful businessmen and businesswomen and people, it wasn't that they went out and they branched out and they tried to take over and take on 50 different things. It was they kept doing the same process over and over and over again, no matter what the business was or what their interest was or what specific goal they were going after. When they found that path to success, they just repeated it over and over and over again. They came up with a new plan. If they're going into this business over here, they found that track and they got up every day and they went and placed themselves in the middle of it and they walked or ran in one direction. Don't think that you have to do so many different things to stay on your path to success. You don't, you have to do one thing. It's that one thing that you did in the beginning that led to the success in the first place. Just keep going. Yes, you're gonna fail. You're not always gonna succeed. That's a part of anything. Failure is no fun and failure hurts, but it is a fact and it is a key ingredient to success. Keep going. If you want to stay on your path, keep doing what you did to get there in the first place. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this week's vlog, How to Find Your Path to Success. If you got something out of the vlog this week, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button one time. If you didn't, smash that thumbs down button twice. And as always, don't forget, please subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, hit the little uh, subscribe button and uh, hit the bell next to it so that you're notified every time I upload new content. And as always, you can find me everywhere on social media, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, at the Stephen Freeman. Until next time, keep being creative, keep pushing the boundaries, and there's nothing wrong with being independent. See you guys next week.